morning, everyone, and welcome to this Big South Football Coach Media Teleconference. Mark Simpson is taking off moderating today's call. Joining us, before we begin, we will go over our announcements for every week. Um, first, our Players of the Week passes. Um, they were as follows. The offensive Player of the Week, Garden Web quarterback Tyrell Maxwell. Defensive Player of the Week, Liberty linebacker. Special Teams Player of the Week, Hunter Trey Turner. And Come Ready Nutrition Freshman of the Week, Gardner Webb Defensive End, Savit Tyler. Other notes to pass along. Last yesterday, uh, with the polls coming out, Big South has teams ranked in the top 25 for the first time. Carlson Southern's in at 14 in both coaches in the poll. Liberty entered the poll for the first time, number 24 in the coach. 25th, 25th in the stats poll. Now the 38th time that two teams, Big South, were ranked the same week in the top five. Liberty clinched the share of the Big South championship win over the weekend, Carlson Southern's loss. The Flames will go for the outright title on Saturday against Carlson Southern. The game at Liberty between PSU and the Flames be just the third clash ranked Big South team um, going head-to-head. Carl Southern was involved in the previous two, and they were victorious. Cardinal Web quarterback Tyrell Maxwell broke the Big South career record for rushing yards by a quarterback, now the all-time leader, and is 86 yards away from becoming the quarterback to rush 1,000 yards in the conference. Kennesaw State has tied the Big South record for the second game, 500 yards of offense. Garner Webb's Jalen Foster has set the Big South freshman record for interception season and his fifth on Saturday to clinch the win over Carlson Southern. Obama's fight to fight the steal is approaching a 300 tackles in his career. He's hit away, making the fifth South player with that milestone. Carlson Southern and Carlson Southern and Ellis, he entered the Big South all-time top 10 for career sack at his 14th past Saturday. Kennesaw State's uh, Chastity Bennett extended both touchdowns five games, second longest picked up. Uh, last week, the conference announced the wild card broadcast for November 19th will be Kennesaw Carl Southern matchup. And lastly, Garner Webb's Chad Peter has moved up into the uh, all-time top 10 in career tackles, now eight, three away from 200 career solo tackles, making the third player once that mile uh, a couple of weeks. Our news and notes pass along, and with that, we'll begin with our coach this morning, head coach of the Running Bulldogs, Daryl McCray. Good morning, coach. Good morning, Mark. How you doing? Doing fine. Congrats to the Running Bulldogs on the victory over Ross Southern. Uh, Two and one, I'm sorry, two and two in the conference overall. They have the bye week this week. But uh, talk about the victory over the Bucks. Uh, limited their offense, uh, both guarded and obviously 10 points. Uh, then we'll start taking questions to talk about. Uh, well, uh, certainly we were static of, you know, pulling the victory off out of Charleston Southern. They're a fine football team and, you know, been ranked high all year. And deserved so, represented our conference very, very well. And, you know, really proud of our kids the way we went down and prepared last week and uh, went down business bike and, and was able to pull off a really good team. You know, like I said, we Hello. they um, you know jumped out on scored about four or five plays very, very quickly and uh, you know, was proud of our football team for, you know, staying focused and, and trying to listen to the coaches and uh, probably you know where we've grown most is I a little more focused on each other and trying to grow our football family and not worried about things around us. And um, I think that's helped us some, and I think our kids have grown a little bit in trying to finish the task that they start. So, you know, we couldn't finish the week before, and it had really worn on the kids. So it was good to see that, uh, you know, we played uh, well in spots up and down. Uh, certainly had our issues areas <clears throat> throughout the ball game because they're a good team. Uh, but we stayed focused, made some plays in the fourth quarter that they really proved to be big in the ball game. And defensive, defensively, we hung in there and 
uh, made some plays, and then offensively, so Tyrell had a had a good day, and and I thought all the guys pitched in to help him, even though we were a little short-handed running back. All right, coach. This time we'll start taking questions for a star one on your phone at any time. Or click to any link near the top of the browser. Click raise hand if you join us via the web. Coach, uh, talk about um, uh, Davies Keelan, our, our our freshman of the week, uh, getting in the um, getting into the game his second start, really performing well on the defensive line. Well, Davis has really come on the last, I'd say, month. He, uh, because of some injuries, he's been forced into action. <clears throat> he's been a spot player for us. And, um, you know, I think uh, the playing on the has really improved him. Uh, he's got uh, really good athletic ability and good acceleration for a big guy. And uh, really with his growth and, and maturity as he's gone through this fresh year. Uh, we had a big challenge up front this past week, leaving quite a few defensive linemen at home. and. I you know, felt like Davis rose to the occasion and, and competed uh, you know, against a really good veteran offensive lineman and made some plays for us. But I, uh, he's doing the things that we thought he would do as he continued to grow. And uh, we need him to stay on pace and get to get stronger and, and use his ability as he grows and into a, a good player in the Big South Conference. But excited for him and he's making some plays Saturday. Another freshman that we've talked about a couple times already last week or two weeks ago, named to the Jerry Rice Board watch list. So we didn't talk about him last week. Um, um, but another big interception, Jalen Foster. Uh, and his story, obviously, you know, uh, started after the Ohio game. But, um, you know, his progression, his freshman year, one of the national freshman candidates, um, you envisioned this so quickly uh, when he got on the field for you. Well, you know, you know, you never know how a young guys are going to act, react, especially when you get into conference play and you know things are extreme on both sides of the ball and you guys make plays. But, <clears throat> but Jalen, uh, you know, he he's in constant growth, uh, but he has a knack for finding the football and, and making big plays. And you know, some kids are just that way. He had one of those, and you know, he he was competing hard in the ball game throughout the day, and then uh, just happened to be the guy that. Uh, was able to make the play for us the last play of the ball game this past Saturday. So uh, as he continues to grow, uh, it really gives us great hope that we can get better in the secondary. And I think, you know, certainly getting more and more relaxed this week. Uh, he's still got a lot of things working on to try to get better. But uh, he has improved each and every week, and we're really, really excited about what he might be able to do for us as we go down the road. And uh, Khalil Lewis out last Saturday. Uh, Jalen Cagle. Uh, second leading rush yards for his. Just uh, what he brought to help spell Tyrell Maxwell in the back. Well, Jalen's been a guy, you know, true freshman. We've been bringing along behind Khalil. You know, he gives us a little uh, running between the tackles. And um, I was pleased with what he did. You know, they got an outstanding front. They're hard to run the football on. And, um, you know, I think the main thing he did, you know, when you play a young player is, you know, will he hold on to the football against good tacklers? Will he protect? And Jalen did a good job of that. You know, 50 yards was a big day. More than that, I was pleased with him. I think he caught five balls, made some plays on the edge, got real to it outside the, uh, the pocket. And, um, you know, those are some of the things to do for us. So, really, really uh, pleased with the way he's come along. And I hope he'll continue to improve and we'll get the field back and have two guys that can give us some punch on the inside. Turning the page, uh, you have the bye week. So, what does it say that? Right before the regular finale, kind of a late one for you. Just talk about how different have utilized this bye week for the middle of the season um, with one game remaining, and what you planning to do uh, as well? Well, it's a little different for us. Uh, we, we're certainly appreciative that four straight weeks without a break. <clears throat> you know, we certainly need to heal up, try to get as healthy as we can, headed into next week's uh, finale against Monmouth. Uh, you know, we're we're preparing just as if we were playing this week. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to work each other speed on speed, good on good, like we do on Tuesdays and Wednesdays this week. And then we're going to go ahead and start making preparation for Monmouth just as if we were playing this week. It's going to take about a 10-day preparation like we did in the opener at Elon, and then uh, try to let our guys take a day or two off at the end of the week before we come back Sunday and get back in the game week. So, um 
you know, I, I think our guys are happy to take a deep breath, try to get well, and at the same time, we can uh, continue to try to get our best better uh, in the finale in the Big South Conference, and we will work a little bit with our younger players this week, a uh, few extra minutes, and, and our red shirt. So it should be a fun week for those guys that haven't got much attention here in the last while. All right, Coach, well, I'm not seeing any more questions for you. We'll let you go. Appreciate you joining us for the open date. Bye. Okay, Mark, thanks. Good luck to all the teams this week. Bye-bye. Right.